as Brian said, I'm going to show you how to do this card, Cocoa Mug gift card. I thought I'd have some of these on hand for last minute gifts, you know, when somebody stops by and brings me something, I'd like to have something to give them as well. So um, this is a, a paper mug that I put inside of it, a packet of hot cocoa mix. I got thinking my grandkids would probably really enjoy getting this too, but don't know if I'll make that many. So let's get started with this. There's a couple different styles that I consider. This is one with rounded corners that I ended up cutting. And then I also made one with a square bottom without the rounded corners. You could make whichever one you would like to make. And it's very simple to do. So I think I'll start with this one here. Just put that over there for you to look at while I work. First thing I want to do is click on Import Basic Shapes from the top of the screen. And since I'm going to do the rounded square, I'm going to type in SQ and select the rounded square. I'll do the with the rounded corners. And I need to resize this into a rectangle, so I'm going to turn off the lock aspect ratio by clicking on that gold lock to make it green. For the width, I'd like it to be 4.25 inches and 5 point inches high, and I'll press enter to resize it. So my, my uh, rectangle has been resized here. And I think I'll change the color of it. I'll send it to its own layer and change it to a kind of a brown. So see what I'm doing here. I'm going to make another one just like it. So with it selected, I'll hold Control and Shift and click to make another. And then I'll just drag it down here. I can select them both and line them up vertically by typing V. That puts them perfectly vertical. And then I'm going to right click and use a line and space, a line, go all the way to the bottom, to edge bottom. This will put this bottom shape right at the edge of the top. Sometimes it's not quite high enough for welding, so what I'm going to do is tap my up arrow a couple times so that it slightly overlaps, and I can make sure that by going to outline to see that those lines do indeed overlap. So now I have my main card. The next thing I like to do is add, um, add a layer for the score lines. So I'm going to click on the Create New Layer, the larger of the two green plus icons at the lower right corner. And I'm going to select this bottom rectangle, hold Control Shift, and just click so that I have another one and send it to the top. Now this one I'm going to just change it to dash line. So when I clicked on the color icon and then select line style, create new line style. So now I have a layer with uh, dash lines and I'll hide that for now. The next thing I want to do is add the handle. When I first tried this, I didn't have any idea of what I would do to make that handle because I'm not very good at drawing. But I got a brainstorm today to, that looks like half a heart. Well, I can add a heart, go to basic shapes and type H-E. And here's a heart four, I like that one. Double click to add it. Of course, it went to the hidden layer because I had it selected. So I'll send it to its own layer and resize this to about 4 inches high. 
and maybe about four inches wide. Now what I want to do is add a um, shadow and we'll make this one a um, minus 0.5 with a beveled edge except now if I join these using the join icon at the bottom it's about the center of the bottom icons there then I have I can overlap this where I want it to be looking at this point right here making sure it's inside of the line you can make the handle be where you want it to be you can make it higher or lower if you want one thing I don't want to do is have it go above the level of the, the top edge of the cup so maybe I'll put it right about there so I'm going to select hold a shift with the heart selected and click on the top portion of the mug and then use the weld icon which is this one up on the bottom and now I'm going to change that color back and I have a handle for my mug pretty simple and straightforward now on the bottom I need tabs because this is going to fold back and then glue these tabs will fold in and then I'll glue it to the other upper half and add the cocoa packet so to draw the, the glue tabs I'll just use the Bezier draw pen tool and maybe I'll snap to about eighth of an inch and I'll left click here come down about half inch left click doesn't really matter it's going to be hidden anyway left click left click and back up to the original left click now I have a tab there I'm going to move it so that it slightly overlaps the design and control shift click makes another one and I'll mirror it and use my right arrow to move it to the other side just barely overlapping and with both of those so that all, all three of those selected I'll weld that and again I'll send that up to its own layer and change the color so I have a bottom and a top I'm going to select those and weld them and now I'm going to get rid of the empty layers here and let's see I can move my score lines up so you see that I have some score lines and for right now I'm going to hide this and there are some of these lines that I don't need so I'm going to use the second arrow on the left if you don't see those you click on this figure 8 icon in the left corner click on the second icon down to edit the paths well I don't need the bottom line and I don't need the round corners either because I'm not going to have tabs on the corner so mostly I just need this top line which is the center fold line here and the fold lines for the the tabs now if I open my card I see that the tabs don't I mean the score lines don't quite go down to the bottom but I can select these and split them then I'll just select the ones that I have here and pull them down I'm going to take off my snapping so I can position them exactly at the bottom of those tabs and then at the top so now I have my back of my card and I have the front of the card so the only thing left to do is make this curved a little bit 
So to do that, I'm going to get, again, the second icon from the top on the left toolbar, click about in the middle, and drag down till I get the curve that I want. Now I can move this over a little bit if I don't want, as, want it to be quite as big of a curve there. Or I can I can leave it up there. And when I cut mine the first time, I had the lip down about this far, but I couldn't see the chocolate real well, the chocolate packet. So I thought about an inch would make a, a good opening there. Now this the cocoa packet is about three and a half inches wide, and this cup is four and a quarter. So that gives some room for the thickness of the packet. Now you can change the width of, of the top portion if you don't like as big of a, a rounded section here. Um, you can do it a number of ways. I can sometimes it's just faster for me to delete some of it or even erase some of it. And then I can Let's try a bigger eraser. Then I can just connect the lines with the node editing. I'll select this tiny little piece here. Maybe this one, right click, it's not letting me select the line there such, there it is, join node to closest node with a line, left click, right click, gotta be sure to grab the end one. And the other thing I can do is just take this pin and left click on the dot and right click on the dot. That's a little bit easier. So then I can round out this if I want or I can leave it this straight and just bend it a little. And it's ready to cut out.